Hey guys and gals, welcome in. This is RacerXOnline.com. I am Chris Kiefer and you're staring at the latest garage build. It's not mine, 2002 KX125. This is Martin Costello's machine. You might recognize that name. He was the guy out grinding it out for Supercross and Motocross a few years ago. He's since retired, started his own Motocross Academy, but he brought out his steed. That's right, 2002 KX125. He got hurt a couple years ago. He said, you know what? While I'm down, why not build a fresh 125? Then guess what? COVID happened. So it's going to take a little while to get the parts, do the things that you need to do to get this bike in the shape that it's in right now. And it's beautiful, right? Imagine a 40-man gate, all 125s, just jetted perfectly, crisp, clean, taken off. I only, th I only could think of like maybe one or two things that's better than that. We won't talk about those because this is a G-rated show. But we're going to talk to Martin here in a little bit go over this whole bike. There's lots of bits and pieces that need to go over this thing. And I'm gonna go ride this at Glen Helen Raceway today. It's about 169 degrees today, but why not ride a 125 up the hills, wring its guts out. We'll be right back to go over this machine and give you some backstory on Martin. <laughs> Nothing screams 2002 more than my frog skins on my face right now, but I brought in the man behind this motorcycle, 2002 KX125. I rode it a little bit. All the videos of Martin because you don't want to see me ride this thing. It's horrible. I'd rather see him ride. So, Martin, I'm a big uh, fan of backstories and why people build bikes. Some of the some of the most fun I've had is out in the garage with my dad, building motorcycles, listening to music, and just uh, spending time with my dad out in the garage. So when we do these garage builds, I like to get the backstory. So give us how, when, why this machine. Okay, um, well, I guess the main reason why I wanted to do a 125 was because back in Ecuador, in my country where I grew up, uh, there's no 125 class, no one has a 125. So you pretty much go straight from an 85 to a 250. And uh, so I always wanted to have a 125. I had only rode one once before. And uh, pretty much I got it in March 2021. I had broken my hand and I knew I was out for the Supercross season. So I figured it'd be a cool uh, project to build a 125 while I recovered. And then, uh, yeah, it just took a few more months than I thought. Yeah, COVID kind of screwed up some parts and all that. Of course, they're still dealing with some of that nowadays. So, all right, let's break down the machine. The parts that you use, starting with, let's say, the most important part is the engine. What did you do to the engine here? 
Honestly, I'm not too sure what the mods are, but Jimbo over at Twisted Development, he helped me build the engine, so he pretty much built it. Um, Puffer at Sano Metal Finishing, he did all the covers, so they're pretty cool, pretty cool color. Then Fathead gave us the head. Um, B-Force gave us a B-Force. Electron hooked us up with Electron. So pretty much that. It has pretty good bottom, but uh, it has six, uh, six gears. So we gotta shift a lot up and down. So yeah, pretty fun. So for me, as you guys know, I'm not a big two-stroke guy. And then when you get on a real 125, not a big bore, a real 125, you forget how many times you actually got to downshift into a corner. Uh, I'm 45 years old, lazy, 450 guy. I shift basically once or twice a lap. Well, you're shifting about 15 to 17 times a lap on a 125. So for you guys out there hopping on a 125, getting that two-stroke itch, don't forget, you got to probably downshift two to three times coming in the corners because I'm in fourth to fifth gear here at Glen Helen. So... I forgot, I was a part of Dirt Rider Magazine when this shootout happened back in uh, 2002. The Kawasaki wasn't known for its horsepower. It wasn't the horsepower king. I got back on it and all these memories came flooding back to me. So not a lot of bottom end. Once it's up on the mid range of top end, it goes pretty good, but you gotta work for it. It makes you like, <laughs> when you come out of a corner, you gotta make sure your roll speed's pretty good. So I did a few laps on it and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. But overall, strong engine. I'm not huge on Electron carbs, I don't know a lot about them, but every time I ride with one, the jetting seems crisp. I do feel like it was a little bit lean on top, I'd probably get some more meat up on top if it was a little bit fatter up on top, but down low it's really crisp and fun to ride. So is this the first time you rode a 125? I rode one one time before Red Bull Straight Rhythm a few years back on Supercross, and it was a built out 150, so it was really fast. So, yeah, this is pretty much it. And it's also the first bike I've ever owned. Oh, really? Yeah, before that, obviously, when I was an amateur, uh, my dad bought my bikes. And then uh, throughout the years racing pro, it was always the team bikes. So this is my first ever dirt bike. 26 years old, and he just bought his first motorcycle. <laughs> and it's a 2002 KX125. All right, moving on the suspension. Race Tech took care of the suspension. Did they valve it for you, spring it for you? Yeah, we uh, sent them, you know, my riding level, weight, and uh, gained a few pounds since then. But, um, yeah, they, they did a good job on it. Yeah, for me, it's uh, I would thought it would be a little bit uh, soft up front, but actually it's firm up front, a little soft in the rear for me. But that is the nature of this 2002 125. So if you go back and read some of the magazines on the test, I always felt like, and I did my notes last night, well, no, two nights ago, and I always felt like the fork was a little bit harsh. Uh, funny how I collect notes from a long time ago. I have stacks of notes. But um, in my notes, I wrote down it was a little bit harsh in the front and then soft in the rear. And that shows up today. So even Val for Martin, I still feel that. I do like, unlike a KX450, which we rode earlier today, it does corner pretty well. So once you get it in the rut, I feel like it's really good. Yeah, it like just feels like small. You know, it almost feels like I'm, I'm riding a little bit, something a little bit bigger than a super mini. It's like a bicycle. Yeah, like a bicycle, pretty much. And uh, once I got back to the 450, that thing felt big and, and kind of heavy. So that's a good thing about this. You can throw it around. Uh, if we were on a smaller track, tighter track, I think I would have had a little bit more fun. Here at the hills of Glen Helen, you got to have a lot of horsepower. This thing doesn't have it. It's not about that. For me, it's about fun, the build, getting to do it. Martin's first bike, that is something right there. Um, one thing I do want to talk about, and I guess you rode the 450 as well, how much of the ergonomics have changed since 2002? 20 years, uh, 20, 22 to a 2002. Man, the pocket of the seat, you're in this bike instead of on top of it. On the 450, you're on top of it. You have a lot of room to stretch out. I feel super cramped on this. You're smaller than me. Did you feel that? Uh, I definitely feel like it's smaller. Uh, I don't feel super cramped. Yeah, like you said, I'm a shorter rider. But uh, once I jumped back on the 450, I felt exactly what you just said. That, that one feels like more flat, where this one, like it, the seat really has a pocket. All right, so this is going to go back home. We're going to wash it and go back home. How long are you going to keep this thing? Are you going to sell it, or are you going to just keep it for a while? Well, I got the bad news from Jay that I'm supposed to change the piston every five to six hours, so I'm not very stoked on that because I don't know how to do it. So I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I, I like it. It's fun. Uh, I just obviously don't want to, you know, beat it up. It's not my everyday bike, but uh, the plan is to keep it. So the YouTube comments are going to be outrageous right now because – you just told us you don't know how to change the top end on a 125. 
Yeah, this was actually the first time ever working on a on a two stroke because, like I said, I went to two fifties when I was fourteen, twelve years ago, and before then I always had someone helping me working on my bike. So I had actually never. So when you say that I gotta change the main jet, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Professional Supercross riders, everybody, how we doing? So uh, let's talk about that real quick before we wrap this up. You're done riding Supercross professionally. Yeah. Um, it's been what two years? No, this was actually my first year. So last year I, I got hurt, unfortunately, and missed pretty much most of the season. And then uh, this was my first official year not racing. Um, I started a training academy, World Moto. I'm from Ecuador. have done so far four international camps. I have a few uh, riders that I coach here locally. Um, I have a few national level riders here. And then, um, and then some smaller bikes, you know. So kind of doing a little bit of everything, having a lot of fun with it. Still at the track pretty much every day. I just finished 14 days of a row, in a row of coaching. So I'm loving it, you know. This is my passion. I'm thankful for it. And uh, I also get to ride, you know, uh, a couple times a week. So, All right. A question that I'm going to ask you. Do you miss racing professionally? You sat back and watched this year. Did you get the itch to ride or were you okay with watching? Initially, not so much, I'm going to be honest. Throughout the whole Supercross season, uh, not really. I feel like it was still pretty fresh. Um, lately, the thing that makes me want to go back the most is watching old videos of me riding, because I'm like, dang, that was fun. And, you know, if you're not really racing, there's no real reason to ride Supercross, I guess, unless you're testing for someone or something. So I feel like I'm going to miss the feeling of riding Supercross, you know? So yeah, there's nothing... Uh Nothing better than riding Supercross. Racing Supercross is a whole different thing. Riding it, super fun, racing. Uh, I'm so glad that time in my life is over with. <laughs> it's crazy. But uh, thanks to the companies involved in here, lots of cool things, ODI bars, work connection, uh, clutch perch, FMF pipe and silencer. As you guys heard at the beginning of this video, this thing does sound crisp. It is, uh, I think, a James Stewart when I look at this bike. I mean, back in the day, James Stewart on a KX125, it doesn't get much better than that. He did his pro debut on this one. Yeah. So, yeah, I was excited about it. You know, we had awesome companies help us out. Wiseco, obviously, Jake Clark at Dirtbike TV. He helped me out with all of it. Uh, Sando Metal Finishing. You know, we had Pro X, uh, Fathead, Specbolt. Decal Works did a great job with the graphics. FMF with the crisp pipe. Uh, you know, Race Tech, like we said, on the suspension. We just had so many great companies help with it, and I'm stoked with it. Really cool garage build, folks. If you guys have a garage build that you're working on at home, email me, chris at keferinktesting.com. I love to look at other bikes, and uh, if you're around the Southern California area, you never know. Maybe we'll shoot it. Be fun. We like doing that kind of thing. So uh, if you have any questions, hit me up on my email. And, of course, subscribe to Racer X Magazine, 12 issues, $30. And we'll be back next month with a new, fresh garage build. See you on the next one.